One time I quit my job, and as I was about to quit my job, my boss, me and him, I sold him weed. I act like a dick. I'm like, oh, I will quit. Text my friend, yeah, this motherfucker's being a bitch. I was all half asleep, and I look, and about 15 minutes later, I realized I text my boss everything that I was saying to my homies. And then, uh, oh, yeah, I had to fine. quit after that one. That was the end? <laughs> oh, it was the end. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Thomas Dopeziola, whatever you want to call me. Welcome back to the Dope As Usual podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? This is the Big J Ogerson episode. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. When we booked you, I already, I, Leia told me to bring it up, but have you drove by, I think it's com another comedy store, Laugh Factory, I think it's by Santa Monica. Oh, no. Okay, so it was really sad. I was I, I was telling her about it a couple weeks ago, and she's like, bring that to him. And I told you about it. Dude, they put like R.I.P. Bob Sagan, R.I.P. Gilbert Godfrey. And I was driving, and I I have told you, I even called Marty like, bro! I was driving by, I said, big, and I had a jam. I went, oh, no! <laughs> and I looked online, I was like, Marty! And then I told him, like, I thought he was dead for about four minutes so I could find it. It was the worst, bro. I, I just, I thought I'd bring it up because that was the first time. I'm like, it's the first thing I said, like, can we break him? I'm like, Tell him that. I love those moments of like, thinking like you saw the wrong thing and then like but it's such a profound emotional like jump when you have that like oh yeah it's always in second long spurts you know what i mean it if was you seconds say, it felt like i remember when i toured with corn opening for corn and uh when i got back like it was such an experience and like at the end of the tour when i was saying goodbye to the jonathan davis the lead singer i was like you know what i was like hey i hope you know to see you again and like hang some time whatever and he was like take my number and so I very coolly like I was like yeah I'll tell you I'll just take your number and he gives me his number and like when I get where I go after that I was on the road somewhere I remember I wrote out a thing to him like a thank you you know and it was long it was a little long and I, I sent it to my buddy Justin Silver another great comic I sent it to him to be like hey can you like look over this thing I go, do I sound weird or am I just being like fine <laughs> and he was like it's a little long but I think it's fine I was like, all right. So then I sent it to Jonathan Davis, and uh, it was fine. Like there was nothing like weird about that. But later in the day, just like dude humor, uh, I took a picture uh, or of my dick, and I sent it to <laughs> Justin, and we just wrote. I was like, I was like, hey, does this look right for my age, or some kind of dumb joke about it, or whatever. But for the second, I took it. You know, I, I clicked on Justin's thing and and took the picture and sent it like right in the, in the thread, and for. I mean, it's unmeasurable amount of time how short it was, but when I saw the send thing going across, and I what I just saw was the words I wrote also to Jonathan, Jonathan. David because I sent it to him to proofread. <laughs> so again, it's a thing. It's it's a, it's a non story, but everyone gets it because even though it didn't happen for that moment, I saw the thing going across. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, oh wait, wait, okay. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, I sent it to him too. But I was like, could you imagine? I go, hey man, thank you for having me on the tour. <laughs> what an experience. Mostly goes, and while we're at it. Pick. Here's a dick okay. pic, yeah. This is, and also, yeah, like a line. Does this look right for my age? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone would go, "What if he sent one back?" I go, "We would have just been there." I mean, we we would have just been there then. I would have yeah. just acted like it was on purpose. I go, "Yeah, I figured See, you were a guy. We could just like do dick pics yeah. or whatever to each other." <laughs> you seem like the kind of guy that we could just like bang out some dick pics. Well, I, I, uh, I one time I quit my job, and as I was about to quit my job, my boss, me and him, I sold him weed. He'd act like a dick. I'm like, I would quit. Text my friend, yeah, this motherfucker's being a bitch. I was all half asleep, and I look, and about 15 minutes later, I realize I text my boss everything that I was saying to my homies, and then, uh, oh, yeah, I had to fine. quit after that one. That was the end. Oh, it was the end. <laughs> my daughter found out I smoke weed from a wrong text thing, which she was pretty hilarious. She's a funny kid, which How is great. Is she? She's 20 now. She was so almost 17 i think at the time she didn't know you got high three years ago um well what's funny about that is she like the things that you know you hide it from when she's younger obviously and when she was young though my code word almost like we'd go see movies every sunday with me her and her mom when i was still with her mom every sunday we'd go see a movie and usually you're seeing a kid-centric movie which sucks aren't that great yeah. often and so i would go downstairs in the basement and like smoke weed before we left and i would call it i go all right so to my ex i'd be like you get, you know finish getting ready i'm gonna go do my thing and then we'll take no. off <laughs> and then one week when i was going i don't know what it was i just didn't go downstairs and my daughter not knowing what it meant she just goes aren't you gonna do your thing and i was like all right i gotta start watching what i'm saying <laughs> something else and then she she did say when she when I, this texting happened that she knew 
but only because she was like when her friends started smoking pot and probably her too uh that she was like oh that's the smell in dad's mm-hmm. house yeah yep. but the way it became a conversation was i was texting with her at one point my friend wayne uh, i was supposed to i'm going to his house to hang out for and i was running late for no particular reason i was just running late and i texted him hey uh you want anything from the deli? I'm just rolling a few joints up and heading over. I was like, sorry, I'm late. I have rolled a few joints and heading over. You want anything from the deli? And then I go back to getting ready or whatever. And then I look at my phone. And it's for my daughter. She goes, grab me a sandwich, dog. Oh. And I wrote back, I wrote back, what? Which is such a dumb thing. It's not, it's not a conversation. It's the opposite in a, yeah, role. In a, in a conversation, like you could do that, you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. what, huh? What I said? Not yeah, it's, it's there. So I went, what? And then 30 <laughs> seconds later, I was like, I got to call her and tell her. Like, that's the most, it's more insulting to be like, uh-huh. I, but for a minute in my mind, I was going, I'm like, do I text back and be like, I didn't, I don't know why that. That wasn't. Uh-huh. Type I, I don't, I'm like, <laughs> she knows technology better. Uh-huh. I mean, she'd be the person to go, that's impossible what you're saying. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah. So for everyone out there that has not bought your Father's Day gift yet, pay attention to what we're about to say. Have no fear. Manscaped's got you this Father's Day. The leaders in below-the-belt waist grooming capabilities and technology. Guys, Manscaped's back again this year with the complete package for your dad's package. So check out manscaped.com slash Yola. Use code Yola at checkout. It's 20% off and free shipping. Let's start off with the Performance Package 4.0. Inside this package, you're gonna find the lawnmower 4.0. Then after that, you're gonna find the Weed Whacker 2.0, ear, nose, hair trimmer. And you already know the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Performance Boxer Briefs, and the Travel Bag. Can't forget about the Beard Hedger Pro Kit for all the dads around the world. Included is the Beard Hedger your trimmer, the beard shampoo and conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, and two free gifts, their signature beard comb and scissors. So it's Father's Day. Get your dad a gift right now. Go to manscaped.com. Use our code at checkout. That's Y-O-L-A. The code is YOLA. Get 20% off plus free shipping. Remember, manscaped.com. Code YOLA is 20% off plus free shipping. Have a happy Father's Day. I think it's real funny that the, the rose... Uh-huh. The role. Yeah, yeah, and I, it's the I'm same going through that I was, right like, now I was too. like, I'm in trouble almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. I know. Like, oh, no. For me, I had kids young, so I went from hiding it from my parents to hiding it from my fucking kids. kids. Like, immediately. Bring, yeah, my, bring, my bring. daughter was, I was 23 when she was born, so she was. Oh, yeah. see, she's shit. 21, right? Yeah. This man's daughter was here last episode two hours ago. Gave him a giant joint, and halfway through, like, light? You don't light it? Yeah, and then yeah. I'm like, Oh, you're, <laughs> she's never seen you actually inhale. She watches the show, but doing it in person, I've been tipped way like different. How old is she? Fourteen. She's fourteen. I was saying it's way different. It's it's interesting. They're gonna be fine. Too. Oh, you know, what I mean, like speaking. there's there's the thing. Like now, it's it's so funny. Like I know mm. she smokes. I don't think she smokes a lot, but she smokes for sure. America. Yeah. But yeah, but she um, <laughs> we're at a point now. Like if she comes over to my house or we go to a concert or something like that, and like. With other people, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna smoke a joint real quick before we go in, and just let, make her stare at us because I'm like, <laughs> I can't be the guy who smokes weed with you yet. I didn't, I didn't find the families who did that to be all that like enviable when I was younger. Even mm-hmm. though I don't think it's that they were, there was so yeah. much more than that things. But all these with yeah. the house, they were like, the these are the parents who were like, you as go. long as you're here, mm-hmm. you know, I'd rather it's have you here drinking, smoking. You go. I guess there's a necess- there's a necessity for that place in the world for kids, but also I'm like. Those families were always like fed up. Like, yeah. Every single time. As they got older, it's <laughs> like they're true. all just kind of like it's failures small. and whatever. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, no one's ever like, uh, doctor, what was your childhood never, like? No. It's like, it's never been. well, I had the cool pot house. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, my homie Ryan, I mean, Ryan and Ethan's man, uh-huh. like, you could drink there. His mom, she'll buy us beer. Like, Super yeah. I was going to say, all outside shot too, those, the mothers of those families were mm-hmm. some one of the kids. <laughs> Yeah. I'll I hope try. not. I was there for years. <laughs> yeah, no, Dude, just... when Louis J. Gomez told yeah. us that story about like his friend's house, I forget. It's like his, his mother was like a toothless, like 55 something year old lady or something. She like crawled in bed with him, like mm. going to sleep over, started breathing in his ear and then just left. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, uh. you ever but again, back? that was like a house where it was like, yeah, do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Jesus no, Christ. not for me. But I... on that, before we go on the next yeah. thing, we got some weed over here. I rolled joints for earlier, and now we're ready to smoke. Hell yeah. The first two guests don't smoke weed. Really? And I really thought they were going to. Uh-huh. Dope as usual. Yeah. I, I really thought they were going to. But I told my daughter, like, you got to give yourself a chance to just be a kid. 
Like I didn't start smoking weed till I was like nineteen twenty. Just... I started in my twenties too. My early twenties, I tried. It. I went to Amsterdam. Oh, uh, was damn. the first time that I like really. I tried it before that, you got and I had that first situation of like, uh, you know, there's always that first time they say sometimes you don't feel it necessarily, mm-hmm. or you just get tired. Yeah. And that's kind of it didn't really hit me like that. But then I uh, was it good it, weed though in comparison to like not, no, it was just trash. No, I mean I started smoking weed in the. You know, yeah, they're very easy. Like they're still pulling seeds and all that kind of mm. stuff out. But it was right at the end of that. 1992. So I, so I didn't have, like, uh, like a long time of, like, shit. Like all weed's pretty good at this point now. Yeah. yeah. yeah all I think weed, you have to go out of your way to find, like, real gosh. weed. But what about, because you live in New York, right? So even in New York you're talking about, it's hard to find weed? Uh, yeah, I think for nice. a long time. Yeah. Now, everyone's got pretty good stuff. And now the dispensaries are there, mm. so. Oh, that's right. New York. Which Every is pretty corner, wild, dude. Right? Every corner has a van. They sell fucking... Eight yeah. different strains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, New York's pretty wild. They're doing it's expensive in the dispensaries because I guess they told me there's technically a thing. They're not dispensaries because they're not affiliated with like a grower, which I think is like one of the oh, qualifying things. Yeah. They're basically like retail. So okay. it's like you're getting markup on like that. So they do stupid shit. Those baby, you know, my favorites the, right now, the baby jeters. I mean, you're gonna say I love I, them. The second Everyone I like the li- like jeters. Yeah. The small joints are like point threes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're great. Like, Did you ever see them? But I mean, they're like sixty dollars for a five what? pack in New for York. For the five pack, yeah, yeah, that's too much. It's it almost should, two grand for sixty. It should, be, should be thirty bucks, forty bucks, yeah. maybe. You ever see them do the makeshift church? It'll be like in a business park, and then it's like church of you know co- uh-uh. community, and you like this. They do this in Orange County. You go into this office suite, and then you go past security, and they got a steeple, and that's the waiting room and shit. Stop. And it's technically a church. That sounds kind of tight. <laughs> it is. Ooh, that's kind of hard. They should name all the strains blasphemous shit. Mm. When I've done a, like weed shows before, I remember the first place that would do that, I would go to, it was in Toronto. It's called the Other Round Comedy Club. And it was great. She knew what she was doing. She had, owned a head shop next door. She just patted the right hands of like the local police to like let her do these like indoor weed smoking shows. And it was still illegal there. It wasn't like when it was all legal like it is now. So she in the front, she would sell like Sierra Mists and like, you know, little Cheeto bags and yeah. all kinds of little snacks and stuff they make. And the back was this cool showroom where they just had like lighters and uh, rolling stuff and everything. You'd bring your own weed and people would get And it was so fun to do. But you had to get used to 100% of the shows I've done there. They have a staff of like pretty girls who look like gypsies, basically. They always were like, you know, they're hippie girls. Yeah. And then you know when you're on stage at some point of the show, there's going to be a guy laying on the ground. They call it greening out. It's like laying on the ground yeah. while a gypsy girl, like, while his head's on her lap and she, like, rubs his head. Like, you got to get over that being weird. Like, oh, we lost another guy? All right. Get one of those gypsy bitches in here. To- yeah, I was like, these fools are <laughs> faking that shit. Yeah, yeah greening out, bro. Yeah, where's, one of, those, head, yeah, where's one of those hot gypsies to rub my forehead? <laughs> well, I listen to this fool talk about his dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we were way off topic. Legion of Skanks, your podcast. Yeah. All right, how long has that been going on? I think we're like 11, almost 12 years. Damn, wow. Yeah, it's been going for a bit. That's and it was a cool like to watch it. Like, That's like one of the f- besides like stand-up, like the career stand-up, but that's like helped along the way. It's like you get to levels and then you find, you know, you, know, you need a manager at this point or a, a lawyer or an agent. Those people kind of handle the stuff. The podcast was so like... Our first year, I think, when we were done, we were like, like four hundred people were listening to an episode, like, and it wasn't like a, we're blowing it. We're like, four hundred fucking people are listening. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're not, we're, there's no way to advertise it. So it's people who were like, I'll listen to your thing. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm like, that's awesome to be where it's at now. Is like, we have Unreal. a festival. It's insane. Unfucking believable, honestly. And I would imagine, like, years, your audience helps you guys probably get through the pandemic more so than other comedians. You know? Oh, man. I w- if I didn't have, like, broadcasting, like, during the pandemic, I'd have been fucked. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, you said you have kids, too, so it's like, I would have been, like, in such a... That was great. Also, to, like, just get through it, like, mentally. Mm-hmm. Just have something to go do all the time and not talk yeah. about I really COVID. thought <coughs> I was going to love that shit. I was like, you don't want me to do <laughs> shit and go nowhere and just film at my house and not be bugged? Oh, yeah. And then you realize fast, though, too, like, there is something so much to, like, like Zoom episodes and stuff are like fine. It. They're fine. And, like, you, you could do, we've caught a rhythm. Like, we do our second one on Legion of Skanks is on Zoom every week. This way we can still, we're not together. You know, it's hard for us to get together, but we could 
get down in front of our computers for like two more hours a week. And it's like, and we've kind of figured out how to do it, but I mean, there is no replacing like the energy of being mm-hmm. in the same room. Mm-hmm. Like it's different. It's way, way different. We've, we've turned on a lot of guests we fuck, we would just be so stoked for because like, no, we don't, we can't do Zoom, bro. Yeah. Because the first time you're meeting somebody, I feel like, and plus, it's Marty and I. We're just high ass fools. And most people are like, oh, who are you? Like, after go, oh, it's oh, fine. You guys are cool. You guys are <laughs> when it was a celebrity on the Zoom, ones be the worst you've never met. Mm. And you're like, so, dude, this is so cool. Nice so to we meet have you. Method Man here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like in a box. And I'm like, this guy's not going to get my funny like this. No, uh, it's, it's different. It's especially because, different. you know, it's like Zoom too. And there's when there's like uh, six a people lag. on. Yeah, the last, mm. you know, you're like, uh, Method Man, blah, 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 you know, weed smoke in her pussy, whatever the dumb thing he says. And he's like, ah. Like, yeah, like, like that delay thing. You're like, oh, no. Oh, no. Like he it? hates me. He didn't like it. <laughs> you oh, his kids are running around the back and shit. Oh, God. <laughs> Hoping it hits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Every joke, like, did it land? That's what it is. Yeah, you're like, nothing? <laughs> nothing here at all? That's the anxiety. Do you guys tripping. do it live every episode, basically, aside from, like, um, I mean, I know it's alternating, but like Legion of Skanks, the the in front of the audience show is live every week. The other mm-hmm. one's pre-record. Um, Bonfire, the Sirius XM show with me and Robert Kelly now is uh, is live. <laughs> you have a podcast with R. Kelly is the first thing I thought was hilarious. Like, it's full of got a podcast, R. Kelly, Bonfire. Uh, Robert Kelly's a brilliant comic. <laughs> he just and he's a uh, you know Robert Bobby is Bobby no, Kelly. No, because he was bringing him up. Oh. I'm like, it's not R. Kelly. I no, know but, that. But for what sure. was so funny was when that first season of that documentary series came out, <laughs> how much they said like they called him Robert Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> like I had him come on there is before he was my co host. Like he oh. came on as a guest with me and Dan Soder. And uh, I held him to the flames over. I was like, he, you know, the, the bit was obviously, he's like, dude, it's not me. I go, well, explain this. And it was like, <laughs> and that's when Robert Kelly stole my 12-year-old daughter and started having sex with her. I go, sounds like you're talking about you, Robert Kelly. <laughs> See, it was also good because at one point in life, he, had, he doesn't care now because it's like he's past that point. But there was a, you see the change in people's names as they get older, like, I, also, I remember Bill Burr was Billy Burr for the longest time. Oh, and then that. Bobby started to get like a, a hung up thing at one point about like, uh, it's Robert Kelly, not Bobby Kelly. And uh, so you're like, okay. So it's like when sticking to that, you go, okay, Robert Kelly. Gotcha. Why do you fucking pee on children? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I still say Chappelle's show might have crushed that was the hardest I anybody cried. went after I've only cried a few times in life at church was... oh, the when they did trial. the piss on you bro come on I had that on CD when you used to burn CDs <laughs> me and my Uncle John off Kazaa oh, oh, oh I don't know it was LimeWire Lime wire? yeah I just wow. used LimeWire because I didn't know how to do it and then I would buy the blanks from Walmart remember this PAX yeah everybody should fucking burn their computer from if your computer was in the LimeWire days because that's when you would download like porn on it based off of non nonsense description of stuff. And it usually it was pretty good, but you get stuff and you're like, is this like illegal porn? You know, oh, you're like, you don't know what it is until you watch it. You're like, oh. That yeah, like, was on my. And yeah, you're like, sure you did. And that's one of those things where you're like, you delete it and you're like, is it deleted? <laughs> like, throw this thing in the ocean, man. <laughs> that's the Put it on a boat, bro. I don't it's know. It's always a joke if you're ever dying fast and they fake, they're like, you know, it's like, all right, you're you're alive right now, but as soon as we move this car, like, you're gonna die. I'm like, get my daughter, destroy Daddy's computer. <laughs> I gotta be honest. Please, God, don't let anybody go through Daddy's computer. That's that need. I was like, that be so many people's yeah. last fears. Like, T- please, it's over. Burn my phone with me in the crematorium. <laughs> I want to be buried with my phone, dude. I gotta be honest. If I was gonna be buried with something, you're six foot bomb sword. So when they found me in two and he'd be like, yo, this fool was oh, balling his samurai. ass off. That's good no, not a samurai or, sword. Like a, like a Viking Or they could plug oh. in your phone and see all the oh, dick pics you took and whatever else. <laughs> and actually sent to Jonathan Davis. <laughs> How did that come about? The corn thing? Yeah, the corn thing. It's so funny because uh, I just, for my specials coming out and we, uh, I didn't even know what my YouTube page was like beforehand. It's not really how I did anything. So, um, they had to get, you know, for the special, they wanted it to be as simple as possible. Like, I guess, YouTube, Big J. Okerson. Mm-hmm. And then they had it as Big J. Okerson comedy because they were like, Big J. Okerson's taken. And we found out that was from uh, a manager that got that for me years ago. And uh, 
His name was Reverend Dave Ciancio. He was he managed music. Name. He managed musicians. So he was. Do you ever heard of the band Shadows Fall? They were like a no. metal band from like a couple of years back, and he was like their manager, and he was he worked in like music promotions. But I did a TV show on IFC that was about a band, and so there's a lot of music people involved in the show, and and that booking agent, I had no agent or no manager. They were like, we'd like to talk to you, and then they, I kind of met with them, and they were like, well, we can't really send you out on the road like for anything, like we're music bookers, and it wouldn't even make sense, but we'd love you to meet this guy who wants to get into comedy management. And this and Dave Ciancio, and I said like, they just got the thing back from him, so someone reached out to him, and I, I wish him all the best. He's great, but he knew nothing about comedy really, and like he didn't even know enough to for me to not know that he knew nothing about. Oh it. shit! But through his and honestly, our our managership just ended. It was even like a I had to fire him. It was just like one day we just didn't hit each other up anymore about it. You know what I mean about management? And, just, and I was well, like, I guess I'm like free to sign with somebody else <laughs> but he uh in one day two things of all that's why i said like as far as like life-changing things that i've done or things that like not define me but like defining moments in my career is i think going on those tours was one of them and i did three i did two mayhem fests and one corn by oh, themselves man, shit and he called me one day and he was like you know, and all of his calls were always like Hey, you want to do a VFW show where you're going to be opening for? <laughs> get this, you know, someone you've been doing it longer than, or something, you know, or just like someone who I'm like, this guy shouldn't be headlined. <laughs> like, you know, what I mean, it was like he just didn't know. And uh, but then one day he called. I mean, it was like back to back phone, like like an hour between phone calls. He's like, you want to go uh, on Mayhem Fest? I think it was the first one he offered. He was like six, you know, thirty cities or whatever, and like you'll be basically emceeing it and doing like little comedy bit, you know. Oh, sick. And I fuck with the crowd, so it was like, yeah, I'm like, let's do it. I go, that'd be amazing. And then he called a few hours later, he goes, how about before that, do you want to go out for like six, oh, six, what is it, by four weeks, four or five weeks before that, uh, do you want to go out with Corn on like a smaller venue tour, which was awesome, but to warm up also, not even just to like be in like that intimate of a situation with Corn, which rules, but like uh, doing the, they did a tour that I just happened to jump on this one called the Ballroom Blitz Tour, where they were playing some places with like a thousand seats only. So like I can control that with you know it's not like when I did Mayhem Fest it's like arenas by the end of the night it's not arenas it's like an amphitheater, and not that these are terrible places for comedy. I've done comedy in them a bunch on Oddball Tour or mm -hmm. comedy tours. Yeah. And what's different about this is they're like waiting for Rob Zombie to go on, <laughs> and they're like, "Who's this fat fucking roadie who just grabbed the microphone and started <laughs> insulting us?" They didn't know who I was, and I'm like, "Hey, look at this girl up here with the whatever, you know." And they're like, "Fuck, you. who is this asshole?" And I had to like get them. Doing the smaller one was because they also didn't know me there too, and it was like, but I had to learn how to like kind of control that that energy of like a rock show, and so I was able to do it more when I went out on tour. But yeah, we accomplished nothing together in the comedy world. I think he's still a burger blogger. He might manage music still. Great guy. Um, but yeah, I'll never like f fucking not thank him over and over again because it's almost like it kind of like made the. It, it's funny, it almost like created like a myth of me more because I tell that so That's much because it's such a big thing. Yeah. But the myth is like it also reads like wrong because I'm not like. They're like, oh, Big J's like the metal guy. Like, you want to go do Coke and whatever and, oh. and blah, blah, blah and, and hit a strip club all night? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> No, not like, really. Like I'm gonna go back and watch like 2020 in my room. Or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not what they're hoping for at all. You want to do a rail off that guy's dick? I think really, yeah. it's like they really think it's like you're in a world like of that kind of thing. <laughs> oh, you at least play guitar, right? Looking like that, like no, no. Whose it's... idea was it to pair the comedy with corn? I don't know. I have no. I don't know if that <laughs> I was. I, I don't know if that was a pitch by my manager. To do it, maybe because he was. Yeah, because because he loves you. He loves you guys. One of my favorite stories is. And this is hilarious. Talk about having like no integrity when you're young and stand up because you just want to work, you know what I mean? And, and you want crowds. And when I came off those tours, uh, they told me, I got, they gave me another call and they go, hey, would you have any interest in like, would you want to do it again in a few months on the Music as a Weapon tour? That's Corn and Disturbed were the main acts. And I was like, yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, yes, I, I will do that again. And they go, okay. And then they came back to me with an offer. They go, all right, so 
you know, uh, Corn is in. Like, they love you, so, like, you can come. Uh, Disturbed is a little more, like, resistant, so for spending the money. So it goes, it just, it would be, you're going to make what you made last time the same. Like, it's not a raise or anything. And I was like, yeah, I, that's, I Chill. didn't care at all. Mm-hmm. And then they go, all right, great. Then they come back and they go, uh, okay, actually, it's going to be less than you made last time. And I was like, okay. You know, I'm like, okay, I think it's still like, cause I, also I've done it twice now, these two tours that I was like, oh, I have like the, like I got it, how to do it now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like there won't be Your shows. Experience. Like yeah, so I'm like I can go back and do it now and probably even do better promotion mm-hmm. for myself by like, I know now from the very first show when I go out there they're gonna be like what or they know me from last mm-hmm. concert and be like oh it's the guy. So I was like yeah I'll do it for the less money. It was like less. It's always like money and tour expenses they say, which is like sleeping on the bus and food or whatever. So less money and tour expenses. I go. Um, it's going to be tough. You know, I have a daughter and stuff. She was like eight, I guess, at the time or so. And I was like, uh, I was like, yeah, it is worth it, though, for that promo. I go, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it for a little less money. Uh, then they come back and they go, um, all right, so this is sucks. He's like, but they're coming back. They're saying no money, but tour expense. Like, so you can not spend money to go on this, but, like, uh, we're not going to give you any money. And I go, oh. I, I got to figure this. I got to talk about my my wife, my ex wife now. But I was like, we got to talk about it, and we we sat down, and I pitched her such a poetic speech of like <laughs> that she was on board. I, I I couldn't even guess what our plan was financially on this because uh, I called back to be like I was like when I was talking to her, I'm like, dude, the promotion though. It's like, and now I got it. So it's like yeah. this could be maybe it's life changing or something. Who knows? To this point, where she was like. We'll figure it out. Like we'll make it work. Like yeah, if you want to do it, do it. How I long call was back. the tour? Um, it'll be like five weeks or so. Mm. So I go, I call back and I go. It's just, it's feels like a real tail tuck, you know. But I tell them, okay, I'll do it. And they came back and they go, Disturb doesn't want a band or a comedian on tour. They don't get it. They don't get the idea. And I was like, what? And they go. I feel like they were trying to get you to have some masculinity <laughs> and, and dignity, <laughs> and go like. I, like they were trying to give me a chance to be like I'm good insulting fuck you, uh, fuck you guys and like you know like on my terms and they just kept lowering it and I just kept going like who does that put it a little further in my ass I'll tell you <laughs> if it hurts shit I'll let you know if it hurts so no it's just so, yeah and I was came back and goes I'm good with that I'm the disturbed the, 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 I, I need you know it's funny I interviewed Dave Draymond years later lovely guy by the way and like uh, he was kind of he was sweet I told him that story he's like He's like, really? He was, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, man. Because I made him laugh the whole show. And he was like, <laughs> That was like, you? He's like, he's like, he was like, he's like, oh, that's really cool. He goes, Yeah, I don't know. Like, maybe I just didn't get it or something. But he was like, and they sent me an invite to like, uh, I wasn't able to do it, but it was pretty cool. Like, they did their homecoming show at the House of Blues. And, you know, it's, it's 11 years later after mm-hmm. I've done that, that gig. So, you know, he's a different guy, I'm sure, too. Mm-hmm. But he was like, Oh, come do this gig. And I, was like, I couldn't, but I'm like, Oh, that's a pretty cool offer, though. That'd have been awesome. Oh, like so from she, Chicago. She went out there just bombed. Like, this is what you <laughs> would have got. Yeah. <laughs> just to fuck with this. 12 years later, I'm not any better at this. Uh-huh. This is what you would have got. Hey, Disturbed fans, are you? You paid me for this one. I, by the way, <laughs> if it makes sense, maybe, and this is the first moment, exclusive, that I've ever had this thought. Disturbed's music, it's the pot. But Disturbed's music is... <laughs> it's the pot. I like that. Is they have to go out there and be like... You know, mommy didn't love me, and you have to hit me. Why don't you die? And I'm sitting in a hole in my room, and a, a little boy in my head, and all that kind of music. So to have a guy go out there and be like, "Is this fat girl your girlfriend?" Oh. <laughs> or, like, you know, or like whatever the dumb shit I'm, you know, like when someone's being shitty in the audience, yeah. like you just go out there and they're like, "That's not really the end." And I'm like, "He's right." Different vibes. Like corn, definitely on their own thing. Like had. Uh-huh. It's not so much of a cutters vibe. It's more of like cutters. Uh, it's more of like uh, girls, like you know, Yo, and like uh-huh. uh, like bright green, yeah, like stuff. And that's a very yeah, good yeah, description. Exactly. That's a good bright point. Bright green striped sock on one side. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red on the other. Exactly. It's like it's much more of that, and you know, having like uh, forty braids coming off your hair or something <laughs> than than that. You know what I mean? Like uh, then disturbed. Disturbed definitely like the you know seventeen year old wearing like a, a priest outfit I or something. Disturbed. They were wild. He looked like the guy from Anthrax to me. Mm. 
I always mixed Scotty them up. And, mm-hmm. They always looked the same to me as a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but damn, Disturbed. I haven't heard of those fools in forever. We just saw Corn what last year with yeah. with the System of a Down. Amazing! What a oh, good man, show. I wanted, I wanted to go to that. Uh, oh, it was the cool. thing in Vegas. Mm-hmm. We went to the one here. Yeah, no, I know they did, but they're yeah. doing a uh, one day in Vegas. It's like Vegas is doing this thing now with these tours. They're like a genre and everybody mm-hmm. ever in it. Really? <laughs> like the the posters, like you know. Big, a lot of names. 10,000 acts. And I mean, like, in the this writing is bands like Body Count and stuff, where you're like, damn, that's like a pretty big band. And they're small. To beat on uh-huh. the, and they're written, like, down here. Yeah, it's like, it's pretty nuts. Then System of a Down, Corn Tool, I think. Who's the best? That's a great... Mm-hmm. Remember those New Year's goals you promise yourself you stick to? HelloFresh is here to help you eat better by delivering directly to your door fresh ingredients and easy recipes, taking the hassle out of dinner time. Spend more time doing the things you love instead of going to the grocery store. Like Marty said, let HelloFresh take the hassle out of dinner time. They're going to deliver fresh recipes, fresh ingredients to your door, ready to go. Guys, how much is your time worth? Are you a nutritionist? You got time to be driving to the store through traffic, wandering around the aisles, putting together recipes, doing all this research? No, you don't. Your time's worth more than that. HelloFresh is saving you time, saving you money, making you healthier. You know what it's like to look in your fridge and go, there's like nine things in there I can make, but I don't know recipes. I can Google it. HelloFresh helps you eliminate all that. Every week, they're giving you 40 new recipes. So you're fa- you can't even eat 40 times in a week, but if you can, HelloFresh is there to help you out. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Yola65 and save 65% off HelloFresh with free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com forward slash Yola65. And don't forget to use code Yola65. That's going to get you 65% off your whole order plus free shipping. Remember, it doesn't get any better than that for America's number one meal kit. Rock shows are wild as hell. His wife loves rock. Marty, you went to the rock show. That was your first show, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've been to like a lot of metal shows and like backyard shows and punk shows. My mom and my sister are all into that. You, you remind me of the guy from. Uh, did you ever see Shane Gillis show me this video so much for of what uh, of the guys? It's it's L A for sure. It's uh, like a local like young teenage like Mexican metal band, I guess, and it's there. It's at a Denny's, and he goes uh, and he starts fun. and he goes, "What you seen this for?" He goes, what's up? What's oh, up? Yeah. What the fuck is yeah. up, Denny's? <laughs> and then it cuts out, and it's like they're moshing in Denny's. Yeah, at Denny's. But yeah, I love that. I, I find that video like sweet in a weird way because I'm like, you, you'll get to a point if you're a performer in your career where you're just going to be like, you know, how long do I got to do this? And I'm still sitting at the old, like, you know, mm. the funky chuckle shack in wherever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But there's a time when you would tell everybody you know, it's like, yo, come see me at the fucking funky chuckle shack oh for sure you know what i'm saying if you were playing in the back of a subway as you go yo back room of subway like we're doing a show you weren't embarrassed to tell no, girls yeah. you like that and that's i love that they're in that phase yeah, like yeah, yeah. What's you know, up? What, what the fuck is up denny's <laughs> yeah i remember that the backyard shows were two bucks jeez my homie jeez so awesome. throw them. california is probably much much uh better for that i feel like your hometown bands like i mean my girl's from hermosa so it's like Pennywise and uh, Sublime and all that. Yeah, uh, from down, know, down. Let's bury a keg right? on the beach. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was my uh, my mom. My mom. I grew I grew up on classic rock, so I didn't get into rap till I was I told you, fifteen ish. But then like mm-hmm. so, so it was a very different. Yeah. It was very mm-hmm. different, but the metal shows and all that shit. Um, I don't like getting punched at. No, I don't appreciate the mosh pits. I step back and fool still, but and I'm not. I'm small. I watch it. Oh, I, I love watching it. Oh, I love seeing fools like do the, the back, the back the cool, fist. The coolest it's thing terrible. of uh, of being on tours is like you can go like side of the stage and like mm. you see what they're seeing and it's like mm. Whoa. intense. Doing that with like Slipknot and shit. Like you're standing on the side stage. Like, yeah, that's crazy. That my, me and my ex-wife's, early, one of our early dates, I was trying to impress her. Again, it's like I said, the innocence of like uh, in, what you yeah. brag about at the time. Like I was so confident that I got her. I was like, I know some people over at the local radio station. Like uh, I got us free. I got us hooked. <laughs> I got us hooked up for Ozfest. And you no, know, that's she's, tight like, she's like, she's like, yeah. okay, I know, but it's like it's hooked up in the most like you're on the lawn. Like yeah. this isn't a seat. This isn't <laughs> oh, like gosh. a good seat. It's like I can get you in the doors of. I don't have a backstage mm-hmm. pass or anything. Like I'm in there, but I'm like. 
I got us in, for, you know, the thing, we're in the worst place you could sit. But I never sat anywhere besides that yeah. my whole life. I was yeah. always nosebleeds and whatever. So uh, we went and I was, I still, I still am of his music, I guess, big Marilyn Manson fan. Oh, hell yeah. And he was uh, closing before Sabbath or Ozzy that year. And Slipknot was before Marilyn Manson. And I just knew what Slipknot looked like and their thing and, and the one Wait and Bleed, I think, song. Uh, That's all Make I Make Fools Go Nuts. It's, so, but they do a thing that I, was great. When I went on tour with them, it was my most favorite thing to watch because they do it every show. When they do the song Spit It Out, they do a long, long thing of like making all the people in the crowd get down, like squat down. And then he starts like the ramp up thing at the end of that song. And then he goes, oh, so I'm jump the fuck up. And the whole whatever arena, amphitheater, whatever it is, like every, you see that kind of explosion of people. They still do it to this day. When I was, uh, <laughs> when I was brought her to the lawn, uh, Slipknot came on. It's so funny what a fan I am of them now. But like, again, I, I watched Wu Tang once and walked out before Rage Against the Machine. When I've made a lot of dumb oh, decisions damn. when I was a kid, just like a teenage kid, like not really knowing the more. And I've always liked all music. It's not that I was like, that's rock, and I'm a rap guy, and I'm like, I was in all of it. Some re it was on that first album, and the, and I even do like this song now. But I just that song "Freedom" by them didn't catch me. And you love it, it just didn't catch me. So I was just like, eh, we just saw Wu Tang perform shittily. You want to just get out of here? Oh, <laughs> and, uh, and we left, and I'm like, what? Any I just watched them twice at Madison Square Garden on this last tour, their last mm -hmm. run there. It was I wish I would have seen them young. That was so great. Um, I'm so stoned and forgot the train of thought. Oh, so uh, I didn't know Slipknot's music, so I was like, hey, you want to go like walk around the festival area, like you know, get something to eat while Slipknot's on, and we'll come back for Marilyn Manson. Yes, yeah, so we walk around, and I hear Slipknot kind of saying goodnight. And so I'm like, oh, let's go get some uh, good area on the lawn, since you have to be like, you know, at the right angle and yeah. the right close to even see it. You're going to be watching screens anyway. Mm -hmm. I go, let's go get a good area. So we get like trapped in the lawn with, of people. Like we're in it. There's a lot of people. But we could see. It's this heavy slope. And they, uh, something that comes back out. You want a little bit more? They encore. They were the, the second co headliner. It's like, that seemed like a weird thing. They come back out and they play. They rule. They come out and they play uh, one of their songs. I forget. And then the second one is that Spit It Out song. And I don't. And they've got a lot of fans there, and they, uh, when they're, they'd get to the park, everybody get on the ground. Me and my Hispanic girlfriend who grew up, thinking, her mother telling her that like, rock music is evil. <laughs> She's standing there with me, and everyone's getting down around us. A lot of bros, a lot of khaki <laughs> shorts, and, and and they know something, and me, her, and like, I mean like. 15 other people on the entire lawn are not down. It's everyone's really abiding by this. And we're like, what is this? I don't even know what it, what it is, but everyone seems to know. And they're looking at each other with like, like, like we're ready to fuck shit up. And I was like, and I'm almost looking, I'm like, there's no way to, because everyone's down. You can't even like finagle your way. Like, let's get oh. to the, let's get to the <laughs> stairs and like, let's wait for this to end. Yeah. We're just in it, dude. And when he gets to that, da -da -da, jump the fuck. I mean, I've never. In hindsight, it was probably like exhilaratingly fun, but in the moment, it was terrifying. Like it was just, <laughs> but it was, I was going up and down, but my feet weren't hitting the ground. You were just like attached oh, to people, like everyone moving, and I was like, "That's worst. fucking scary." So I like to observe it. I love the energy it creates. You know what's up? What the fuck is up, Denny's? Mm -hmm. But like, I've never like <laughs> wanted. I've never wanted to get into. I've never been listening. I watch music with such like. I mean, girlishly Dick Ryder energy. I mean, I'm really like, <laughs> dude, dude, that looks so fun. Comedy, <laughs> comedy is like the strip down of that, except mm -hmm. for like Def Jam and a couple of like certain comics. But it's not a braggadocious like yeah, ego thing. swing your cock thing. It's most to be like, hey, I've looked stupid here. Have you ever felt stupid? Have you ever done this dumb thing? I've done. It's a lot of that. And but like music, you get to go up there and you know, even you're a guy who goes home later and you know takes a nasty shit and <laughs> breath stinks. Like at one point when he's on stage, he's in a position where you're like, this guy's a god, dude. Like he's controlling these people with like yeah. very calculated microphone holds and the way he looks at the crowd. I think that's mm -hmm. awesome. I'm so in intrigued by that.
That's 100%. why I love Marilyn Manson so much. I'm like, yo, this guy's doing Broadway up Badass, there. Badass, bro. It's crazy. Um, the now first... he's a fat guy in a vest. Yeah, he's, he's getting a little <laughs> fat. Yeah, Dude, he's, getting, he, he's got a guy. Yo, know, I brought, mm. he's my favorite ever. Is he uh, really? Performers wise. Oh, which, and, and I love his music too, but like, I think the last few years have been whatever. But his original, like, first five or six albums even are pretty amazing. And the way he changed, like, through them. But man, I took my. By the time me and my girlfriend, like, were dating, it's been a long time now, but like, he was already past his prime. And the two times I took her to see him, like, the first time he did, like, okay. And she tried to be like, because she knows how much I, like, love him. She was like, it was really good. And I was like, and she likes the music too, but she, I was like, it wasn't. It wasn't. I feel bad because I've showed you on videos and whatever, like, what this guy used to be, and that wasn't it. Then we went to, like, a year later, some the Chicago Open Air Festival, it was called. It was like a three day tour or something, but the night I was able to go, like, Marilyn Manson was one of the headliners. And so we go and watch him there. And so this is a soccer field of some sort in Chicago, and it's huge, and the stage has enormous screens next to it and he comes out and starts playing uh you know his set and it's like i could you already tell it's just not the energy of when he was younger it's, you know he's an older guy now i guess but he came out and they're just fil- the, the big screens filming is just straight up oh. his fat rolly neck <laughs> oh. and it just looks bad and you're like Damn, dude. And even when he was like ugly when he was younger, there was something like artistically like yeah, beautiful yeah, about so, it. It was yeah, like he's yeah. so cool in this goofy outfit, but yeah. he's like doing such a cool thing. Now it just looks like, you know, oh, your uncle I, trying to put on his old clothes. Yeah. But so uh <laughs> Antichrist Superstar is one is, is a great song of his and and when I first saw him ever, when I kind of discovered him live, that was in the first con- I didn't know any of this guy's music and I just saw him in concert. <clears throat> Except for Sweet Dreams, a friend was like, I have an extra ticket. And um, he fucking like, they like, he would do the grossest shit, and it would be cool. When we're at this open air thing, he, uh, Antichrist Superstar, when it came on when I was younger, it's like the lights go out. There's this weird eerie music playing, the music hits, and it, it comes. It's supposed to be like satire of like the uh, like the Third Reich, like Hitlery. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like these. It's you know he's he's up there as like a preacher on this big uh, oh I'm on podium. a podium and then there's like uh, it's, oh, I remember it's that kind of like Nazi-ish didn't he do that like, on MTV or some shit yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. I, was, I remember when I was a but kid he, he does uh, and it's like it's supposed to be provocative and whatever the thing it's uh and I was that was so cool I even kind of like um, my Comedy Central special I did in 2016 or 17 the intro of it is inspired by that very much like when i showed the band that i had and put i wanted i was like i love this like you know obviously don't make it look nazi-ish yeah like, obviously don't do the hatred <laughs> but i was like but i like but the, the idea of like idea. The, the the kind of flags kind of hanging behind yeah. you of like whatever the artwork is that was just pushing the limit yeah i was That's like all he was doing <laughs> so i go i love that now he's doing that it's, he's not the headliner so it's still sort of light out which kills on my radio show on Sirius XM, we did a whole episode about that. Daytime evil doesn't work. When you have like <laughs> Swedish metal bands playing at like four in the afternoon. I saw Cradle of Filth while bur- birds were- Oh, you were, really like metal music. Well, well I was just at Ozfest. So uh, I, I wouldn't have gone to see them on my own. But gotcha. Cradle of Filth, like, it's like Swedish or you know Norwegian death oh, metal. And like, it was just birds tweeting and everyone like hot. <laughs> like Sweating pouring with water the ears. on their head. Oh, yeah, it's like, it's just such not Different the, vibe. Uh, the thing for that. So Marilyn Manson's doing- Antichrist Superstar at this Chicago festival. The things drop down, but there's no mystery to it because it's like daytime still, so there's not like uh, darkness that's hiding at all. He's on the podium. And when I said before, I've seen this guy do so much gross shit before, and it was cool. Nasty shit that I would be like puke if I saw it, but I mean like, you know, like, exactly like blowing snot rockets. He's pissed himself on stage before that I watched, but he draws like attention to it where he's like, I don't give a fuck kind of thing. And you're like, yeah, dude. <laughs> This guy, they, they, he's on that thing. He's got the neck going, and they're shooting him. And when that that song, that militant like song, is playing, and he's trying to do the the, the televangelist, you know, thing, uh-huh. he's doing, and he goes, he goes and blows a <laughs> snot rocket. <laughs> it just, it just catches his lip <laughs> like this, and the crowd. I mean, it's a soccer stadium, and everybody goes, "Oh, he has no idea how close that is on the big screen." <laughs> and they go, ho, oh, oh. ho. <laughs> and then it like the cameras pull away from Matt, like go to something else. <laughs> 
to to just go for something else, and then like, you know, for, for like five six seconds, and then it goes back to him. And when it cuts back to him, he's doing this thing, oh. <laughs> he's trying to blow it off <laughs> his lips. And I just remember looking at my girlfriend, just like going, like, this is not him. I'm sorry. That open air festival was also <laughs> one of the hardest. I think I mean, am I just filibustering? Are you guys supposed to ask questions? That no, I no, no, this is why we're, we're here. Rambling. This is why we're here. Rant where, City, we call we it. Once we get to Snot Rockets, yeah. that's where we like to be. Oh, so yeah, this yeah. is our comfort zone. I, um, in that same festival, I made another ass of myself because of uh, a dumb thing. But I, when I, this is well before I went on tour with Corn in like 2000 something early. My friend Craig Gass, who's a comedian, who was very in with like, uh, musician like bands he had some like kind of tie into like you can get backstage to shows and stuff it was awesome <clears throat> one time he took me to a pledge of allegiance tour which was rammstein Damn. system of a down corn and slipknot actually nuts not it was system of a down rammstein and it's a lot of skinny uh, white children in that crowd <laughs> for sure oh yeah for uh -huh. sure and slipknot was the main act so we were backstage talking to some like you know lighting guy that craig knows and uh it was i mean now as like years gone by it is more like the musicians but it was always that he's like hey sorry we gotta miss the encore we have to go say hi to my friend tyler who does the fog machine for whatever yeah you're like dude what <laughs> and he um so we fuck <laughs> it's fucking weed dude he's like i've been podcasting all weekend every podcast has a moment of me going it's called, what the fuck was I talking about? And yeah. when we say that, we usually bring up a fan question. <laughs> Go, so, oh, guys, I did it again. Bring it up. So he, my friend Craig backstage goes, hey, I got to go take a piss. Wait here. And kind of like, you know, don't do anything. I'm sure. And I'm sitting there. And then I just kind of look over to the right, and I see waiting by a door is uh, Max Weinberg, the drummer for the E Street band, Bruce Springsteen, for his for always, and the drummer for Conan O'Brien for a bunch of years. He was the leader of that band on the show. Um, and Max Weinberg's there with his son, who's, I mean, a little 12, and he's dressed in the full slipknot, look with the dreads and everything coming Sick. off it. Yeah, and I'm just watching this, and I'm like, I see Corey Taylor, wow, the lead singer, comes Mask out. Mask on or off? Off. I didn't know it was, I had to find out it was him. Yeah, I think. But he comes know? out, but he comes out, and... Uh, he goes, he goes, Max Weinberg, it's a pleasure to meet you. And then he sees uh, Max Weinberg's like, it's nice to meet you. My, uh, my son is a humongous like, fan of you guys, obviously. And whatever, he's like, what's up, little buddy? And, you know, he's giving him like, a, a nice like, head rub on the thing and probably takes a picture. I don't even know. All I remember is him just being like, you know, acknowledging the little kid there. And I'm like, ah, what a neat thing for that kid. Um, skip ahead a zillion years. I go on tour with Corn and everything. And then maybe like a year or two after, not a little more than that, maybe like two years, three years after, they came around to a, on tour with Slipknot, Corn. So uh, I was like, oh, you know, I asked the drummer, I'm like, oh, I'll come see you and hang out. So me and him and my girlfriend are watching, Corn went on first, and then he was like, meet me in the sound booth and we'll watch Slipknot. Great. Awesome. We're sitting and watching Slipknot and the drummer from Corn. Ray Luzier goes, um, he goes, this drummer is like unreal in this band. He goes, they got to keep him. Because the other, the original drummer was kicked out of the band. Joey Jordison, yeah, yeah, he's dead now. But they kicked him out before. But he was out and they were using like touring drummers. And this was one of the touring drummers. But the corn drummer was like, they should sign him to this band because they're going to lose him to somebody else if they don't. And like, you know, that had no effect on me and like a concern didn't weigh on me. I was like crazy, crazy. you know, yeah, like, crazy. like that's nuts. What nice drum, <laughs> drum rumors, you know, was, oh, I didn't know we were spilling all the drummer tea. And then he goes, uh, and then he just goes, yeah, it's actually Max Weinberg's kid. Shut the fuck up. And I went, yo dude. And I go, will you believe, and I tell him the whole story, what happened. He's like, that's crazy. And I'm like, that's insane. That's so insane. It really was. So yeah. So many years later, or not even many after that, but several years later, I'm at this Chicago Open Air Festival. They gave us backstage passes, but I don't, you know, you don't want to be a bothersome thing at all. We just wanted to watch the show. Mm -hmm. 
So the only time it made sense to go backstage, I was like, oh, I got to piss. Let's not wait in line. Let's go backstage, go to the bathroom. I only see one rock star back there, Jay Weinberg, uh, Max Weinberg's son, who's in Slipknot. I'm like, this is unreal. I got to tell him this story because he knows that moment. Because I know since he's posted pictures of that. of that night where he's like, isn't it crazy I met these guys? So I'm walking over and tell him. I get intercepted. He gets intercepted, I should say, by a couple that starts talking to him. And he's listening to them like very nicely, like kind of hearing their st- whatever they're saying. And I'm looming, which I hate. <laughs> and I felt pockets. it. I've, I've, I've seen people have done it to me, and I know I'm doing it where you're just like, around, yeah, he right? knows I'm waiting to like say something. He feels it. My girlfriend's going. Uh, she's like, cut it, cut it. And I go, I know. I understand completely how this looks. I go, but this story is too... If someone was doing this to me and when it came up time, the story was like that amazing, I'd go, it's worth it. you know, if somebody was like, dude, I sat behind you for an entire... Somebody, and now I'm seeing you perform it or wherever. You're like, I have to tell you this. A couple walks away. It's like a weird amount of time. And he starts walking, even though he kind of knew I was waiting to talk to him. So I start walking next to him. I go, Jay... Weinberg, right? And he was like, he's like, yeah. And I was like, nice to meet you. I, I, I want to hold you, but I have a crazy, crazy thing that's uh, uh, my friend Craig Gay. I said, blah, blah, blah. Where's the thing? And, you know, he goes, uh, I see backstage. It's Max Weinberg. Oh, hey, you meet Corey Taylor. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm a comedian. I, I go on tour with Corn. Blah, blah, blah. I'm with the drummer from Corn. He goes, they got to keep this guy. He's an amazing drummer. <coughs> it's Max Weinberg's son. And he goes, we were walking the entire time. And he just goes, Cool man. <laughs> and oh. walk inside of a door. I'm like, I go, are you what? I go, That's insane. And then he goes, and then someone said to me that put it into perspective, which maybe he's right. He goes, Yeah, he's like Max Weinberg's son. So he's probably not like he kind of knew he was gonna be in mm. a band that he wanted to be. I still think he should have given it much more than he gave it, but like I don't know, maybe he's jaded a little bit or something. I've always heard he's like a really nice guy, but like, and he wasn't even a dick. He was just like, oh, Very cool, cool. man. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's more than enough. that, dude. Yeah. Come I'm, here. I happened yeah. to be in a hallway. Watching it Six go degrees down. of whatever yeah. that put me in that hallway at that moment for no reason. Yeah. I could have been outside and not seen the whole thing. He just goes, wait here while I piss. And I see that whole interaction of the first time you meet the band when you were a child that you were currently in. Yeah, I'm gonna stop making excuses for him. He deserved that. Deserve more. <laughs> a hundred. He should have given that a lot, lot more than he gave. It. I'm sorry, dude. I would have jumped up. Like I had to take a piss, but I'll be right back. You let's talk. Hell <laughs> no. I won't say who. But yeah, we gotta take a picture oh, together, bro. Oh, something. Sure. Might... I would have been like, I've told that story on stage. I've told the story. He was, he was like, great. Oh, and I'm like, yo, that's wild. Nobody else on earth has ever said this to you. <laughs> no, yeah, I have. You gotta respect synchronicity like that. You have and, like, to. Coincidence you should. Or whatever. That's yeah. a you really weird to. thing. How did our paths cr- again? Also, how about right down to the wire of not backstage under any point that whole day, except at the time we went. Yeah, I gotta go take a piss. Let me uh, yeah. run backstage. Let's go backstage and take a. We'll both go to the bathroom, <laughs> and then I just he walks off the bus alone and starts walking. I was like. Come on. The other be, couple was definitely probably that got somebody him. on the shoulder that was going like, but somebody on the shoulder goes, don't tell him. He's going to disappoint you when you tell him. Oh, that's a bummer. I got to be honest. That's, that's why I don't, bummer. that's why I don't, uh, I mean, I haven't made any like heavy concerted effort to meet Marilyn Manson is because I'm like, what could he do but let me down? You know what I mean? the coolest. <sighs> What if he's the coolest? He's like, yo, you want to go to the barber and go get our hair done? Like, yeah. yeah, chest bump. You want to shave our eyebrows off? <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to say earlier. The first time I heard of Marilyn Manson, I was in third grade. And you remember you used to make collages? Here's 18 magazines we got for free, children. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cut them up and make yeah. a mood board. Remember that? Yeah. yeah. I remember I made a rocker one, <coughs> and I put Marilyn Manson when he did the cover and he had like the flag a strap or over his, uh, like just over his dick. And then he had like some leather thing. Why the hell did they give me that? I was in the third <laughs> grade, right? First. But it was like a entertainment or whatever sure, magazine. Sure. And I remember everyone went so hard on me for like six months <laughs> and just hated me forever. I live in a Mexican ass town. Because he was like a devil dude? They just thought that I was that now. Oh. And I was like, yo, did you ever hear his music? He cut his ribs out of his body so he could suck, suck his, his own dick. I go, oh, so great. that's you have, not true. It's so great. If you read his book, like it's so funny that like he fostered most of those like rumors. But he wrote that book when I believe he was like much more 
coherent. No, but like understanding of like what he was. Because shock value was different then, because people weren't used to just everything. No so when him and really Eminem came out, it hit different. Yeah, it hit different. But I mean, also just like he like he would go on like Bill Maher and shows like that and like kill it because he would still dress the part, but he was almost telling you he was like, "Yeah, I'm like satire. I'm parody." Mm. Yeah, he's articulate. Like I'm parodying your kid. He was very articulate. Very. And then I like for some reason I heard him on Marilyn Mar- on Mark Marin's podcast. A while back, like Mark's trying to like, you know, talk to him. He's interested in him, and I feel like Marilyn Manson was the whole time's like, whatever, you know, just saying dumb shit. Uh-huh. Like he's like, I don't know, I have to go home and sacrifice uh, a girl I have in a trunk right now. And he's like, is that like a thing? Do you have like a girl that's like so into you? She's like into that stuff. He's like, or you know, I could stab them with. He's just like being a character, and I'm like, that sucks, man. And that I feel does like, suck. And I feel like he's become more of like that guy than like very articulately like saying. Like I was, he got me with the Bible thing when they were like, "You rip a Bible." He goes, "Well, I'm ripping paper." He's like, it's, "You have to give a shit about what's on that paper to make, make it mean it anything." Something. And then the only point I'm making is like, if you believe it, believe the words, and don't worry if someone's ripping up pieces of paper. It doesn't. Matter. And I was like, "That's smart." Like he was always. That's like, smart. And again, I'm dumb, so maybe I'm just like, "Yo, this guy might be a prophet." <laughs> this guy's great. <laughs> yeah, this guy might be awesome. Should we all cut ourselves? <laughs> you guys want to cut? We're gonna cut your ribs out. <laughs> oh damn, dude! Going down the Marilyn Manson rabbit hole. It does. I saw a video of him yesterday. He's just walking through a rap concert. I don't know if you've seen it. You see, he's walking through the crowd of like a rap show, but it's like a a festival where there's yeah. a bunch of shows, and you could see he's you know he's with some chick. He's got all golds. Yeah. He's got his parted doll hair and his Lego, little gut. And Lego a, hair. Yeah, and his, his plug in Lego <laughs> And then he's got a uh, like a vers- like a all gold Versace outfit on. It's like you're the hardest man to ever live. I hope you're cool. Like yeah. in person, because you know, everything about the man is like, you're so dope. Yeah, well, he's he's awesome. He bugs me. But he's he's lost it. Like the thing. Oh. I just think the thing is gone. You it's know the what mystique. I mean? You yeah. know what? The mystique's gone because, like, again, not that I wish this for anyone really, but I'm like, man, if Marilyn Manson died, like, if he was in the 33 Club, mm-hmm. oh, legend for God. God. Yeah. Bro, we're getting to watch him age, and he's, the he's not doing Club? it. And I don't know what the answer is of people who died at 33. Yeah, I don't I think, know. Uh, I thought it was Tupac. 27. 33 Tupac. is. No, no, Tupac was young. He was 25 yeah. years old. Well, I thought before 33. No, 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 the age, like the age uh, Chris Farley. I know the 27 mm-hmm. Club. 27 Club, and I've the other one's 33. Is, is Chris Farley? Is there someone to look Farley? that up? Because oh. there is, there's a bunch of them. I know it's another one. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the 33 Club. Nipsey Hussle. Mm. I just looked up the 27 Club to make sure That's Janis Joplin. Yeah, Janis Joplin, Jimmy Hendrix. Hendrix, Jim Morrison. But I was going to say, you said growing up in like a very Mexican uh, town. Mexican, I think, goes... Hard, like that's metal, de, that's goes, Depeche Mode, and they they love they love the Smiths. All the Mexican girls love like that, that kind of, Really, shit. they love like sad shit with trumpets and some violins and shit. They can be sad too. Dude, uh, Hispanic, <laughs> Hispanic countries are keeping metal alive. Any me- when we interview all the metal guys, like they say that like oh, but there's a big. I mean, punk Iron, Ma- Iron like Maiden that. could fucking sell out like in Mexico, uh, in Mexico, like, like a soccer stadium. Oh no, for sure. Huge. I'm just saying like. Uh, when it comes to the almost stereotype of what do Mexicans listen to? Like, they listen to these sad emo shit, but it's, it's sick. But if they're going to listen to American rock, it's like that. All my homies, besides my couple drug dealer friends, are all rocker kids. They're literally yeah. all metal kids. You know, my sister, she had Liberty mm-hmm. Spike. That's why I said I went to all the metal shows because my sister, she's a, she's a dick, but she's she was cool when we were kids, man. And my mom, Taking you to metal shows and shit? Yeah, That's that. Awesome. I would go to shows. I went to a lot of Tiger Army shows. My first... Uh, Dude, Deftones Deftones were sick. Genuinely still one of my like favorite... They're great, huh? Fucking bands. They never hit a era of like bad music. It's the thing it that... Kind my, of faded, it's not, though. But it's, not that, but it's not that they're all hits. I don't think they've had hits since no. like the one. late Wait, 90s. Well, White Pony was White the, Pony, the, the album. You. Yeah, the album was... But a, what was the was song? Change in the House of Flies. Thank you. Because it was in that. Uh, Listen to this. But you know what that was? That was in the <laughs> Queen of the Damned. Thing, the last thing yeah, Aaliyah did. The... It was the last thing where she comes in yep. dancing that song, with and that blood. was like the uh, yeah. That's why that song got very popular. Thirty-three club is a thing. Mm-hmm. Farley, Sad. Meyer, Vera, Nipsey 
Russell, yep. John Belushi. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I should know John Belushi because they almost said like that's what a lot of people were speculating. Chris Farley was trying to like trying to get the thirty three. Yeah. Mm. I don't think so, man. Oh, I know. I know his. Uh, I know his brother very, very well, and uh, he wasn't trying to die. He, oh. He's just a drug addict. <laughs> yeah. What I say all the time. Uh, that's why I stopped doing coke. I used to do a lot of coke, and I was fat. I'm like, I can't do the Chris Farley route. It's like oh, you can't, yeah. you're funny. Every, you're you, everybody like who you like, you have a little thing going. Like, don't ruin it. I'm 33 years old right now. Mm-hmm. No mm-hmm. drugs for me. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm trying to keep Lay it off. cool. Yeah. There's no such thing as the 34 club. Go fucking ham next year. <laughs> <laughs> Throw acid in point. your face. <laughs> no. Damn, Chris Farley. We were just talking about him recently. He got me a picture for my bathroom. It's uh, it's Chris Farley Matt down Foley. pulling up his pants in the Down by the River skit. Oh, yeah, Matt Just Foley. like on the Matt Foley, yeah, when he's pulling his pants. Um, who just – Matt, Matt Barnes. You know what? You remind me of Chris Farley's energy. He told me that <laughs> on Monday ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see myself falling down a hill, <laughs> getting up, stoked. Yo, uh, yeah, Chris, I guess you don't go. What do you just look at him and go, fuck you, Matt Barnes? <laughs> no, he was sitting. I went, no, man, I appreciate it. That feels tall, no matter what. He can be laying down flat. That feels tall, so. We took a picture with him and he sat down yeah, while know. we were standing. No shit. <laughs> yeah. He was still bigger we're, than me. We were the same height, so. Um, sorry. I would have said Alan Iverson for life and choked him out. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Iverson for life. Oh, Alan Iverson for life. Said, and throw him I once I choked out Alan Iverson. No, no, I never He's got. From Philly. I never got close to Alan Iverson, and the close I got, he wasn't nice. No. No. <laughs> and what? No, not at all. In what kind of scenario? Well, actually, I shouldn't even say he wasn't like a dick. It was just like I was definitely going to bother him <laughs> in a place he didn't want to be bothered. What restaurant? And were you people at? jumped in front. No, it was like a club that I didn't want to go oh. to. I literally went to it with a guy I know who works there. I was already doing comedy, and they were like, "You should uh, come to this club." It goes whatever it's called. I forget. He goes, As "Iverson comes and hangs out there." I was like, "Oh, dude, I'd love to meet him." He goes, "He's the coolest." And I just saw him there. And he's probably the coolest to a bunch of black people who mostly go to that club. But this fat white guy started walking up and two guys just stood in front of me. And I was like, oh, I just wanted to like, you know, no say good luck in the playoffs and, and say what a huge fan I am. And he was just kind of like, we'll tell him. And he was just like kind of back smoking like behind them. And it's almost like, you hear them doing this to me, but whatever. Oh, uh, you'll, we'll tell him. So he wasn't a dick. He wasn't like a dick to me. It was just one of those things like he didn't want to be bothered. And like I was just the idiot that walked up to was yeah. like, Hey, I want to tell the you know, bike all day long. He goes, hey, can I talk to the champ real quick? Yeah. What? Oh, I just want to say, I just want to give the people who are stopping you are always going to go like, you just want to say, yeah. congrats, you love them. Well, they're, I understand being like, yeah. well, let them know. Totally. Like, yeah. I get it now. At the time, though, when you're like, sucks what a dick. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. Oh, I felt that. You got to stop and say hi, no matter what yeah. it is. You, I, 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 even if I'm sitting at dinners and shit, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll take Dude, you have to. You're you're not wrong about that. I, I do agree to. with that. You have to like do what you can. Like everybody's I, I, experience is like that's the only time they're ever gonna see the person they love. Why well, never say no to a picture? Sometimes like I don't. Like last week, I was at a co- club that was small. Like uh, the, not the small. Their capacity is where they have a large actually comedy room, so the capacity in building isn't much more than that. And then when the other crowds were coming in before that show was letting out, like it was getting over like fire code capacity so like they have to uh like i don't go out after that show so it's like the people will move oh, yeah so it's like i get but if i go out and there's 200 people that are asked for a picture like i'll just it's take the picture yeah. unless again it's sometimes hard. you got to be like i can't because i have to do something but like yeah man, if you came to a show i'll sit there and yeah. i'm not like bummed about it either i'm like yeah they're the Sick. only reason that fucking I, this works you can't hate the audience man it's impossible you have to like you know what I mean? Respect them at least. They're the only, if they're not there, yeah. none of this exists. Exactly. exactly. If exactly. no one's listening, you guys don't get picked up by this network if no one gives a shit. <laughs> exactly, dude. And yeah. I feel like it's like you with Alan Iverson. Like, what if you were like, I met Alan Iverson. He high fived the shit at me. We took a lethal weapon picture. You would forever be like, Yeah, I love. It. <laughs> yeah. But you're still I a still fan. Do. Yeah, I still do. I still love him fan, so much. But you're mo- you're like. I'm sure he he just didn't want to be, but you, you know you don't ever want to give that like. I, I mean, at least I, you know you do. Like you're talking to people, they're in the crowd. I think with basketball or sports, it's more like I'm a super specimen of a human. 
thank you for buying my jersey. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. With Don't, kids, it's more like, goes, yo. Mm. It's like, observe me. Yeah. <laughs> My greatness. Don't mess up my a lot blow. of the comedians think like they're above being in the comments or talking to the community or really actually being on level with the fans. Like I luckily I would be bad at that and not out of any kind of like fuck you to the fans. I'm just social media is like I answer like my messages if I get you know, some of them get dumped and whatever, but like like I answer my own messages if I can. But like the uh, actual like the posting of stuff and all that things, like I'm terrible at but the good news is because I have so much broadcasting I do a week. You know, I mean, I'm doing my Sirius XM shows eight hours a week. I do Holy I do four hours. I do four hours of uh, Legion of Skanks a week, and then what are we know three four hours, I guess, and then another podcast that runs an hour that I do. So that's like every Monday through Wednesday, I get all of that in. Oh damn! Yeah. Oh, and yeah, then you're yeah. on the so road. My, so that's so that's right. like, and then I'm on the road. So like. I, I'm connected to the fans through through like that. They 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 never stop hearing me talk. Oh no, they would never. So it's like when I, you know, but I will talk to everybody after a show and stuff. I'll sit there all day. I they know what they do. They just keep feeding me weed, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. So here's the fourth time I hung out with Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> but it never gets exhausting. That's so much broadcasting, and then you go right out oh, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday to a city, and you're back. Like that's a serious schedule. It's insane. <laughs> it's like, really? On paper, yeah. It's like, yeah, it really is. And are you doing stand up in New York just on the regular too? No, not a ton in the city anymore because I'm on the road so mm -hmm. much. And but, just uh, like what we like to highlight is like just how long it takes for people on their path to really get where they want to be. Yeah. So like, where were you before when you got picked up on that corn tour? Where were you in your comedy career? How far in? Um, like ten years. Mm. So maybe a little over, but right around 10 years, I think. And, and then hmm? did it move the needle to the point that like, oh, no. I saw a huge jump in my career after? Nope. It was more like, like I have a career of like seedlings, it seemed like. And Louis J. Gomez from Skanks also said something I always thought was like kind of astute. The way he said it was like, it sort of works in 10 year phases. Mm -hmm. Like in a thing, it's like, well, there's there's going to be that group that like just in their 20s, something catches with them and like they pop and then some people will be like you know the 30 to 40 and some of those, it's at 40 and stuff like that bill burr wasn't like known known until he was like close to 40 louis they always say careers for sure you know i mean working always but not like a these are yeah. celebrities now yeah, you know 100%. and uh at 10 years in i had done a couple i done pretty much the things you're supposed to do having a kid young made the little things a little different i wasn't yeah. like i had no la presence at all I was in New York, but I was like, so I was getting in the clubs and stuff there. So I worked locally a ton, and I was able to survive with that. And then Dave Attell took me on the road with him constantly for years. Nice. <coughs> which was awesome. When I was a kid, there was a show he had where Insomniac. he would drink people. Drink Insomniac, people. yeah. I remember I used to watch that as a kid. It was the best. That was the first tour I did with him. Was He was on the Insomniac stand-up tour, but like it was named after the show. But... um. And I had all these things happen, but nothing, I guess because you know, you're supposed to go to L.A. and audition for stuff, which also was never my deal, like acting. I didn't, mm. never over gave a shit about it. It's such a different thing than stand-up. It's weird that there's yeah, so much like, crossover. I feel like broadcasting and stand-up has so much, like, mm -hmm. and that's why I love yeah. doing both. But acting, no, nothing like that to me. But, um, so I really didn't know what the thing was going to be. I thought, like, stand-up and then podcasting, when we started podcasting is when, Things happen. And then help. That's the biggest thing is like help from people, man. And, and there's a bazillion thank yous in my bibliography from like the first person who put me on stage and was like, you did good, man. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm proud of you, you know. I went there and like chickened out for like four weeks and the fifth mm -hmm. time I tried it and he was like, I'm proud of it. I'm like, that meant something. Keith Robinson who took me and Kevin Hart out of Philly to like uh, New York basically just kind of show us around there. Like it's all, and then Kind of in that stagnant phase in my first 10 years, I kept doing all this stuff, and then it was the second 10 years, just kind of like a little bit of like just gliding, kind of like plateauing. But doing all the stuff, still still working constantly in the clubs, doing my podcast, other people's podcast. Then we got the radio show on Sirius. And then like we were, Schumer, Amy Schumer put me on the, you know, they wrote two or th like two things, two or three things for me on her show to be a part in. Louis C.K. put me on Louis in three episodes, small parts. Jim Jeffries let me open for him at Carnegie Hall because I met him 
15 years before that at a festival in South Africa. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, so the all heck? these, like, uh, these just little pieces, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe Kev told a story about me on a podcast, and then it all started just kind of, and then the one of the biggest, Ari Shafir, who executive produced uh, my special that's coming out, Ari, like, Comedy Central was kind of like, ah, that guy really didn't, nothing really popped for him, so they were kind of out of the business of me. And then uh, Ari fought tooth and nail for me to be on that storytelling show. And when I did it, I did this well is not at happening. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I did it, I did well at it. And Comedy Central, like, really flipped on me. They gave me an hour special and everything. So it's like, nice. because I, of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ari, that's like the biggest factor in Comedy Central specifically. But Ari also got me, like, my agent that I still oh. have. He still got me. So it's like, he's just like that. So, so that's like, uh, the amazing racist. Yeah. But it is, you just, you need people. Like, I feel like, like you need people to, like, do all those things like you know to help you along yeah you're... so like this all those little, so what it's with all those little seeds of things like i was nice to amy and then when amy schumer and then yeah. when she got famous i wasn't like this bitch like i was kind of mm -hmm. over that phase of like getting jealous and envious <laughs> you know where i was like oh wow amy's making, shit. Like, fucking crazy yeah like, wow look at her so, you know so like when she has opportunities for me she was like i'd like you to do this thing i'm like yeah that's way better than being like I don't like her because she's making it. <laughs> of, course. I mean? of course. No, we always say like it's the energy to have. It's easy to get there, but you can still get there. We're yeah. all human, but I mean, you have to fight that in yourself to be mm -hmm. like, what's it? Mine I always use is great because I'm buddies with both, and they're both uh, real great guys. Is uh, I remember being on the road in like a shit hotel, good gig, but they kind of like fucked me on the hotel, which already felt like, Damn. like they don't even respect mm -hmm. me or whatever. I'm not selling tickets like that, and then. Something on my phone, it was like Pete Davidson and Michael Che get SNL. And I got so bummed. I was like, where I felt, the part of the being bummed was I'm like, damn, why should I should just be happy for them. I know them, they're good dudes, but I'm like, fuck, man, that sucks. And then I just kind of sat down and I was like, what? I'm bu all I'm bummed about is like they're hitting something in their path. I have no interest in being on Saturday Night Live. I mean, I've been a fan of it my whole life. So it's nothing about the show, dig mm -hmm. on the show, but... I'm not a sketch comedy actor. Yeah. It's not my thing. Not so I'm like, role. why would I get upset to do it? Like, so then it was more like to, I was able to immediately open myself to like, I think it's awesome that I can like text Reflect. Che every week and be like, dude, that fucking joke was so hilarious. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's better than like having like some weird of tension. Of course. And when you put out that energy, man, only good things come back. I mean, that's what we preach on the show every week. Just well, I remember feeling that like when I'd get picked up to headline in like a city and they like the club makes the opening comic or something or host pick you up from the airport or something like that and it's just like a 50 year old guy who never left town and I've watched them with me be like yeah I've never uh, heard of you before this weekend but uh, I watched some of your stuff it's like pretty funny and it's like passive aggressive he's not being uh -huh. mean it would outwardly but he's just going like yeah I never heard of you before and you're like well I'm here I'm headlining and you're up. hosting the show yeah I'm like <laughs> why are you being like I get that feeling of like why are you being like kind of like shitty to me like I'm sorry you didn't make it out of your town to do your yeah. thing it's like a weird so I try, you gotta fight that though sometimes like I said it's oh, nature yeah it's human I, I get that and that's just because I've said it before I'm like it's happened to me where I'm like what am I doing I'm tripping Fool's gonna crush it I don't even do that shit mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's not even it's, my it's, lane what do I yeah. give a fuck and even if it was, it's like, damn, I better work a little harder. Well, I had a weird, starting with Kevin Hart, though, it sets like an interesting gauge. Like, someone pointed out to me the other day, which, but, I, but I've said it before, too. Like, yeah, it is. It's like a, it's a disheartening thing, because like, at my, like, I'm like, in my career, I'm like, I think I'm doing all right. Like, this is further, probably, really, than I pictured ever when I started doing it. But I didn't really have a picture. I was 19. Uh, further along. But I mean, I am still... And with zero exaggeration, a, a worth one five hundredth of Kevin Hart's money. Do you know what I mean? Like, and his celebrity for even that, like, you know, it stops traffic if he walks outside yeah. and stuff. But I also got to stand next to him for a couple times of experiencing that through his eyes, and uh, I don't envy that either. Honestly, if I wanted that, I would have clearly like worked harder to become like a like a star in some way, but, I, you know, in that regard, like a celebrity more than just like a stand-up comic. 
But like that is what he wanted to do. I'm like, God bless. But I, now I just root for Kev out the ass because I'm like, yeah, dude. I was like, my my, you know, the, maybe the most famous guy in the world used to sleep over my mom's house once in a while because we were playing Madden late. It was like pretty fucking wild. <laughs> so I'm sick. like, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm like, I should be happy about He's that. He's stoked for him. Yeah, not like, why not me? He goes, because you're not a tiny black guy that's does what he does. Like, why would I? We're not going for the same roles. Mm -hmm. like, you're Damn, a little black dude. I'm a giant white guy. <laughs> can't beat Different. me up for soul playing. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Did you ever see Paper Soldiers? One of his first movies? I, was that's when we were driving back and forth to um new york from philly every day so it was my car generally getting him to those oh shit. table my reads and everything. Of all time. yeah, yeah. patrice in the beginning yeah. patrice, patrice gets shot the in the beginning. charlie murphy's in it it's pretty pretty ridiculous but the white kid and their crew yeah michael when Mikey. they would do when they would do table reads before they had him there because i was just driving kev up and i would kind of just go walk around Rockefeller Records. Oh shit! Meet Damon Dash and stuff. Only Sick. got an elevator with Jay Z once. Didn't say a word. <laughs> didn't say a word. <laughs> didn't say a word. But like, but Damon Dash was like pretty cool to talk to at the time. He was a very interesting guy. I mean, they were at the top of their game at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'd go to the table reads, and sometimes I would read that kid's lines That's for them. Sad. And I was almost like, I'm like any day now is the uh, they're giving the call to uh -huh. make me the character. And I remember like, <laughs> Kev was like, "We start filming tomorrow." I go. Did they say that I was that kid? <laughs> I was like, I mean, that's been cast for a while now. <laughs> no one's kid. We're, we're, oh, yeah, we're still looking for that character for filming tomorrow. Was that yeah. Rappaport? Was Michael Rappaport in it? Yeah. There, I think he was. No, 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 no. He wasn't the white I'm kid. I'm trying to think who, who that was. Rappaport may have been in the movie. Yeah, But yeah. Uh, it's like a younger, it was like a younger kid. Uh-huh. Like a uh, white, I forget. I don't think he was a comic or anything. They just got an actor to do it. But he, uh, but yeah, I remember Paper Soldiers came out. And then, uh. Soul Plane got leaked, and that was like a big deal. Mm. Like it got leaked before it was in theaters, so they said black people just bootlegged the shit out of it. And it was like they made it a popular cult. Like because Kev's told me before that Soul Plane actually did do a lot for him, even though like, the money's fucked because it got leaked. He was like, it became such a cult thing then. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That he was like, that's almost a, it was like worth more. That it's like. For Soul sure. Plane, if it really went into the theaters, would have probably been more people going like, "This movie sucks, shit." It's got hydraulics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Are you serious? Terminal Malcolm X. <laughs> <laughs> that, yo, that movie's that movie's the equivalent to Airplane. I th it may have been. It may no, Airplane's a great like old it slapstick is. comedy. It though. Is. Soul Plane is like was written by what I would think is a racist. It seems like. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, did a white supremacist write oh my the God. script for Soul Plane? When you it looks think like you're making fun of black like people. Like that, it's so much worse. Well, I used to, starting off in the black comedy circuit, it is funny how much uh, I had to like, I was happy that I didn't like change my like verbiage, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, like the way I talk for it to like create a character. And I always thought that was like, I always thought that was going like, like, oh, you guys won't understand me unless I'm like, yo, yo. I, oh, yeah. I don't talk like that. I'm like, I shouldn't force that. Of course. But so many white comics when they start in the black circuit are... Go that route? And they'll all say it's always how they talked, but... I've always talked like this. <laughs> yo, son, yeah, yo, son, I've been saying Easy son since I was seven out. years old, son. That is kind of racist. My dad yeah. called me yeah. son. <laughs> It's not meant to be, yeah, but like subtly. in comedy, I always felt that it was be like if I change the way I talk because I think that's what the crowds are. I'm already pandering in material. Yeah, that's what it is because I want to do good. But uh, to go up there and be like, "Oh, yo, a lot of fun, honeys up in here." Like it's, I would never. It's not the way I talk, so I wouldn't do that unless I was making the joke that. Damn, yeah. you said honeys. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a All while the fun since I've honeys. heard that. I'm an old man. What's Whoa. up, money grip? <laughs> yo, money grip. Lots of fun honeys out here. Remember Fly <laughs> Girls from A Living Color? Yeah. Ooh, that was hard when I was Those a kid. Those man honeys. So, April 5th, April Dog 5th, Belly. Dog Belly, live from Skankfest, uh, coming out on YouTube for free, everyone. Check it out. On man. your channel. On my channel. Premiere? Big J Okerson. Yeah. Purchase back from the yeah, Rev. I spent it. a gazillion dollars. So, where's my camera? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it. It's free. But that's it's Dog Belly April fifth. Yeah, that's your. New I'm special. excited, man. I'm excited. We did it at at our festival in Vegas in front of our crowd. Mm. It's the jokes that I wanted to do. I didn't have to answer anybody yet. 
I guess YouTube will take it down if it's a problem, but <laughs> you'll be all right. I think it's gonna be all right. Yeah. And are you just so if not, we'll go up on Rumble with the pedophile with all hunters. the other crazy fools. <laughs> You're so comfortable in your act that when you go to film your special, you can go out and just freely slip in and out of crowd work, it seems. like. Yeah, I tried to do that special. just to make sure it gets the essence of what I do. Because like, if I just did a straight material, joke after joke after yeah. joke, it's, gonna, it's not really the essence said, yes, of what Because mm-hmm. like, they, we saw a part, part of it, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And I was telling him, it's like, it's like this. He's like, bring yeah, it in. Yeah, it really like, is. Yo, yo, shut up, bitch. <laughs> and then he you brings it, and that's really what you're saying. A lot of like, comics just do a this. verbatim, almost like a yeah. musician going out and doing their album. But it's yeah. like, you don't see that a lot. People with the skill to like. No, yeah, I don't want to do that because it would be so boring for me. That's yeah. what I said, that it becomes work. Mm-hmm. And that's not why I got into this, to yeah. work. <laughs> but no, the reality is there's so much work around this, the travel, the thing. It's like, it's crazy. The mm-hmm. schedule you have to keep and all the stuff we're doing. But at the end of the day, that's why I said the work is like all that travel is when you land and go to a hotel and blah, 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 and unpack and all this shit you don't feel like doing. This is ultimately culminating in me sitting on a stool and being like, what's your problem, <laughs> jerk off? <laughs> but in the end, you banging this shit it's dope. Yeah, no, it's great. Awesome. That's what I'm saying. So it's a, it's a, the complaint is never about, like, you know, I said, it is like hard work to say it's not hard work. I've almost gone easier on myself because I always be like, I've done like manual labor jobs before, you know mm. what I mean? Like wheelbarrow and concrete, concrete shit. So you're like, <laughs> so you're like, this is a thing. And they go, no, but still, like you know, you have to be places and do something and keep yeah. your mind sharp and like, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You know, say a bunch of you know, keep topics fresh and new. And it's like, so you're working, and I'm like, no, I know, but it's just like, I've you know, I've tarred a roof with someone before, yeah. and I'm like, that fucking that sucks. sucks. But the beauty of what I get to do with, especially broadcasting, not even so much the stand up. And that's what fuels my audience for my stand-up is that I'm now entertaining a guy who's tarring a roof mm. who gets mm-hmm. to laugh while he's just getting through his shit day of a shit mm-hmm. job that pays good. You mm-hmm. know, like that's... you remember that. Oh, yeah, you yeah, for what? sure. And See, I, I saying, wish I could have some And Howard Stern, mm-hmm. Howard Stern always kind of said that thing. He's like, I'm here to entertain you through shitty stuff. So, yeah. I love that. That's the point of the show. Yeah. So where can everybody watch your show, Legion of Skanks? Uh, uh, how, when do you Anywhere upload? you get podcasts. It comes out uh, every Monday and Friday. Monday and Friday. Uh, yeah. on uh, Anywhere you get podcasts. That, Is there the a YouTube. time you drop? Uh, we go live Mondays at uh, 8 p.m. Oh. Whenever on time. 8 something. 8 we go something. Live, yeah. We're live. I'm sorry. We go live on our website, uh, gasdigital.com. Gasdigital.com? Yes, indeed. Nice, man. And your dog, Billy, drops April 5th. On what's your uh, YouTube? Just Big J. Big J. Okerson, Okerson yep. Mm-hmm. Spelled All out, yep. Not comedy anymore. Nope. All right. Yep. We got it. And you got a hella tour dates coming up. You got Yeah, I'm all over the place. BigJComedy.com for all my dates, man. I'm, I'm all over the place. BigJComedy.com. Yep. You you have a lot. Some I see some of those dates. You're doing multiple shows in a day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> no, well, the awesome. weekends always is that. Like I'm going to Spokane. Friday, and I do two that night, two the next night. But they're comedy clubs, though. If it's like the- theaters, is a little different. If you're doing two theater shows, that's like a lot. Mm-hmm. That'll happen too, I hope, at some point. But the comedy clubs, that's always kind of the schedule. Yeah, like I had two. no idea. He knows, yeah. he's, he's from that. that Again, same world. thing if I did my like front to back, same thing each time. That's why I would just go nuts with that mm-hmm. person. That's, so I'm like, exactly. I'm not doing a traveling play. It's like yeah. each thing's got its own weird situation going on. See, that's why I was thinking when we were Love watching, that, like, yeah. this is not scripted. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, that, it's like almost freestyle. <laughs> like, yo, you didn't plan that. I'm wearing a purple yeah. shirt today. You had no idea. That's a completely different it's thing. It's a completely different thing. Yeah. Damn, I'm so You're the Jay Z of comedy. That's what we're getting out of here. Right? Oh, thank you. The Jay Z of comedy. I'm freestyling. I know. I appreciate you, man. I thank know, you, man. Uh, no, we got to wrap up, but thank you so much for being here. Thank you for and, having uh, me, man. It's just Big Jay Ogerson on all social media. Yep. All right, across Twitter, Instagram. We appreciate it. We've had a bunch of legendary comics. We're glad to have you on here. Our fans are going to love it. Fuck yeah, man. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate you. Guys, from Marty and I, from Big J Okerson, have a dope-ass day. That second joint, oof. <laughs> Thanks for watching the podcast. If you thought this was dope, you'll like this episode, too. And don't forget, the best way to support the show, tell a homie.